COVID-19 broke the incentive travel industry's pricing model. In this episode of BEA Conversations, we spoke with Damien Bruce, one of our BEA influencers. Damien shared with us how to rebuild pricing model as we are COVID transitioning. And here's what he has to say. For me, um, like all of us, we need to rethink our business model. What value will we add? And do we really look at something that industry has been trying to do and some countries have been doing it already, is move to a pricing model that is, is chargeable by the hour. The days of commissions, charging management fees, um, is just becoming less and less and how do we operate given all the service we have to provide and we like to provide and that's what we do so well. So I think that um, when we look at hourly rates, you're really charging for the additional administration. So from 2001, there was a lot more additional administration. 2008 and 12, how we're tracking and administering things, implementing risk assessments and all, all the like. So I think if we start charging by an hourly rate, much like the rest of the marketing will do, advertising, social media, etc., you know, we should really be looking at that model so that you can really show the value that you're adding. So for me, it's really step one, think about your competitive set in the market. The market has completely changed. Who's still out there? And if they are out there, what are they doing in that space? And where do you really um, sit in the market? And I think also really strategize what will you do going forward? Obviously, it's changed and you will be offering new services and products and where do you sit within that competitor set? And then I think that with um, all of our businesses, um, we've been able to mitigate a lot of the costs. So whether we're all now working from home, maybe half of the staff are, maybe they're not. We've reduced the amount of rent, our overheads. Maybe we're doing all e-filing and not printing, etc. So printing contracts and phone contracts and the like. So therefore, this, it's enabled us to bring down the cost of running our business to be more profitable. So I think it's that it's that time to really take a risk. Um, which we've all been afraid to do, because if you're going to make a mistake, it's now everyone's a lot more understanding and working together. So I think with those three things, you can definitely come up with a new pricing model to go forward. So Damien, what is one crucial change we could make to the pricing model that will help our business sustain? I think it's almost unfair um, for a client to think that if you're, you are going to survive on 10% commission for a hotel, with all these additional risk assessments, how you control it, how they implement all the COVID things, all these things that his administration is hours added on, where in before it was book the hotel, here's a name for the room, done. You know, so yes, I'm simplifying it, but there's a lot more administration we need to do. So I think it's a, a lot to do with education and you pay for what you get. So yes, sure, have the commission or we take it off the fees we charge at the end, whichever way you want to do it. But it's about moving forward to a transparent base and really charging for the services. Because I know that over the years, particularly the last 10, there is so much more administration in what we do, governance, control, risk assessments, and it's hours and hours of training the teams. Do they understand what, what to look for? And then so how, would, how do we sell it? how do we implement it and execute it on site. So it's, it's providing a lot more services that really 10% commission or if you're charging a 15% management fee or whichever, doesn't really cover anything anymore. But I think we all need to be united and, and think more this way in the new world for providing services. When it comes to event budgeting, what are the essential items we must include? How will communication strategies with our customers and the relationship built with our suppliers help us all maintain our financial goal? I think learning what we did from 2008 and seeing all the security measures that we pay for you know, onto our airline tickets today, and they're still there, I, I would predict um, and you know, you would see this coming through for incentive programs, whether it be from hotels, vendors, coach companies, car companies, event companies and the like, because obviously they're all costs of things that they have to provide that they never did before. And a lot of it from, you know, insurance and all uh, increased insurance costs that they're going to have. Of course, all the new hygiene measures, whether it's thermal scanning, you know, taking people's temperature, um, or what do they do for people who are showing symptoms and having doctors on call and things like that. So there's lots of different services. But then if you think about a hotel as a classic example, 
where we used to book a, a ballroom for 400 people and we'd squeeze 400 people in there with the stage screen and everything. Maybe we're now only putting 150 or 200 people in there. And a lot of the hotel companies um, don't own the property. So they've got to, um, you know, speak to their owning company about, you know, the shift in financials for them and the profits going forward because obviously they can't charge a room rental they used to because they can't squeeze that many people in there and why should the end client pay for it all? So it's a really, it's a whole food chain or a trickle of effect of different costs and things being to look at. And I think there will be a lot of work on incentive agencies or rent agencies to speak to their suppliers, strengthen those relationships and find out what they're doing, but most importantly, communicate it to the client. Because I think that we all need to be aware of what would those costs be <clears throat> and how will it change? Um, the client is, uh, can only bear so much cost and they can't be the end cost of it all. Yes, these things need to be paid for, but I think working together about what does it look like and what, what security and safety and health measures do we need to put in place. If you'd like to gain insight of what types of insurance required for future incentive travel programs, essential communication strategies that will help you build customers for essential items, and if you're a salesperson, what sort of advice would Damien give to help you convert more sales? Click on the link below and we will send you a link to the full conversation we had with Damien Bruce. Thank you for joining us.